Guys, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Today, we will continue our discussions in various for various topics in COVID-19. The topic today is the doxycycline. In Bangladesh, we saw that Dr. Alam used uh, ivermectin with do doxycycline as the combination, and they treated COVID-19 patients. So I wanted to make sure that we go over do doxycycline as well. So doxycycline is a tetracycline class drug. It has less adverse effects compared to tetracyclines. That is why it is more used and tetracyclines are actually not used nowadays. So with this, I hope that you had a great weekend. I hope that you liked the last um, interview we had with Dr. Poor Hassan. And let us start our discussion. And welcome, everybody. So here it is, the doxycycline. Let me take this caption off. Here is the doxycycline. So doxycycline itself is a tetracycline class of the drug or class drug. In 2019, 10 days course for doxycycline was available for $3.4. So it is actually a very inexpensive drug as well. So if you see here, tetracyclines, are drugs that have four rings in them. So I made them over here like four, four rings or tetracycle. And on that cycle are sitting the uh, oxes. <laughs> so that is the doxycycline. The, remember this, that the tetracyclines, when we administer them in our food, tetracyclines, not the doxycycline, tetracyclines in our food, they chelate the calcium, magnesium and aluminium hydroxide or they chelate the positive ions present in the food especially in the milk and they combine with them that is the reason that tetracyclines can have some of their adverse effects including the adverse effect of the teeth discoloration in in younger children or even damage to the fetus this is why tetracyclines are not used doxycycline on the other hand is slightly less uh, bad like tetracyclines, it does not chelate the calciums and, and the magnesiums that easily. Th because of that, it is still controversial to use in pregnancy, but because of the, our knowledge that it chelates them less, it is re relatively safe. It is a broad spectrum bacteriostatic drug. So just like we talked about the uh, azithromycin last time, which would bind with the bacterial ribosome, this, uh, this pathogen, this drug is also, it does the same as well. <laughs> so there is a comment, Luffy is famous now. Yes, Luffy has become quite popular. He has actually become more popular than I am. And right now, both of them are playing here, Luffy and Kyrie, and you probably can hear their um, running around sounds. So bacteriostatic, bacteriostatic means that it does not kill the pathogen, the bacteria. Instead, it stops its further replication. And it can actually uh, kill some of the parasites as well. And we'll talk about that. It's fascinating. So first, let's look at the uses of the doxycycline. Doxycycline. It is used in acne, rosacea. So rosacea is an inflammation that is uh, confined to, uh, to the face. It is used in sinusitis. Sometimes it is used in, for malaria in combination with kin, uh, quinines. It is used in cholera. It is used in walking pneumonia by mycoplasma. In addition to that, it is used in sexually transmitted diseases as well. So chlamydia treatment, syphilis treatment, and then in chronic pros prostitutes. Of course, chronic pro prostitutes is not a sexually transmitted disease, but these are the diseases of the... Um, reproductive and genital urinary system. In addition to that, it is used for tick-borne diseases as well. So diseases by brucella, which is a pathogen that is carried by the ticks, or rickettsia, which causes typhus, and then brucella, which causes early, uh, which causes the Lyme disease. Doxycycline can be used in the early Lyme disease, not later. And look at this one. I, I love this mechanism here. 
you do you know that doxycycline can be used for the round worm infection uh, cure as well or treatment as well and do you know how it does in the round worms there is a bacteria which is called wolbachia inside the worm there is a bacteria called wolbachia wolbachia's job so this blue guy over here wolbachia's job is to help the worms become females so in the presence of this pathogen the wolbachia the worm develops female characteristics so if we kill the wolbachia bacteria then the most of the round worms will become males and when when we administer doxycycline it kills the wolbachia that makes the round worms become male instead of female so the male to female ratio to for the reproductive cycle of the round worm is disrupted and that is what causes the round worms to become sort of sterile and they cannot continue with their productivity or their their reproduction so that is how it it kind of uh, helps uh, treat the round worms as well quick adverse effects so now there are two types of adverse effects that are here in this diagram one are those by the tetracyclines and the other one are those which are specific to doxycycline now remember doxycycline is a type of tetracycline it is a tet tetracycline class drug so the most important thing that we should keep in mind is the pill esophagitis so what happens is that when the pills are taken of the doxycycline and not taken with ample water that can cause esophageal inflammation or that is called the pill esophagitis the most common symptoms adverse effects of the doxycycline are nausea vomiting and diarrhea so the git upset are the most common in addition to that phototoxic dermatitis so what happens is that people who are taking doxycycline or tetracyclines as well when they are the those parts of their body that are exposed to sun can develop skin inflammation so that is called phototoxic dermatitis in addition to that the important thing so let's look at the tetracyclines for for a second tetracyclines not the doxycycline itself tetracyclines in pregnant women can cause renal and liver damage and doxycycline on the other hand can be given to patients who have renal impairment and the difference between these two is that normally tetracycline is water soluble because of that it goes into the renal system goes into the kidneys and can cause damage on the other hand doxycyclines are lipid soluble and that is how they we kind of prevent them from damaging the kidney still in the pregnancy uh tetracyclines are contraindicated and the reason for that is that tetracyclines can chelate calcium they can combine with calcium and that tetracycline combined with calcium can cause gray to black teeth discoloration actually all the all the bones can become gray to black the only thing is that the bones the teeth are something that we can see so normally tetracycline nowadays tetracyclines are not used because of these things but normally tetracyclines were avoided or contraindicated below the age of 8 plus not given in the pregnancy these were teratogenic on the other hand for doxycycline it is not fully clear so there is from the fda's point of view it is a class d drug that means there is some evidence that it can be bad during the pregnancy so it should be avoided however there are both kinds of studies out there that say it doesn't ca cause much damage and some of the uh, uh, studies say that it does so i would i would ask us to be um, be careful not to use it in pregnancy so that is the same thing with the teeth discoloration over here as well teeth discoloration especially with the tetracyclines not with the doxycycline so that is the adverse effects and finally so it looks like our today's lecture is going to become a little sm uh, small mechanism of action for the doxycycline so remember we had talked about 
the bacterial structure with the um, with uh, azithromycin. So this is a bacteria, and we know that the bacteria has multiple layers outside. We have a capsule, so that is over here. Then inside the capsule, the black one is the cell wall. Then inside the cell wall, this blue one is a cytoplasmic membrane. Then inside the bacteria is the gel-like substance, this green thing here. That is the cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, we have many, many enzymes, but one important one is the ribosome, which is the machinery that helps take the RNA or the genetic material and convert that into proteins. Now, in the case of these drugs, the proteins, they, they, they block the ribosomal function. And because of that, further protein formation in the bacteria is not done. And bacteria need to make proteins to develop into two bacteria or divide into two bacteria. They need to make more proteins, more enzymes to which are sufficient for both the bacteria or daughter cells. And these drugs, chloramphenicol, tetracyclines, uh, azithromycin or macrolides that we talked last time, these drugs block the function of the ribosomes. So over here in the bacteria, this area is called nucleoid region. Bacteria do not have a specialized nucleus. Instead, they have a circular DNA present somewhere in their, uh, in their cytoplasm. And where that is present, that is called a nucleoid region. It is not called a nucleus. And then as we talked last time as well, bacteria can have small additional DNAs present in a circular manner. These are called plasmids. Most of these plasmids are used by bacteria for drug resistance. So these superpowers that bacteria develop, they come from plasmids and bacteria are so clever, they can exchange plasmids, just like social media, we exchange thoughts. Bacteria can actually go near each other and then, then do a fission or, or a fusion. And through that fusion, fusion canaliculi, they can share the copies of plasmids and that is how they give each other the capabilities of let's say drug resistance or other harmful things. So these are, this is the structure of the bacteria. And now if I go back here in this diagram, this is the mechanism of action. And this is the last part of our discussion today. This is the mechanism of action. So here we have a bacterial ribosome. These drugs do not hurt us too much because our ribosome is different from bacterial ribosome. We have a ribosome that is called ATS and our ribosome has a 60S unit a 60S subunit and a 40S subunit. And they that together is called ATS. And, and this is not a sum. We do not sum 60 and 40 to make 100. What this is, is that this is, as we talked last time, the S subunits or the numbers here are really the uh, gravitation of the subunit or the protein outwards when we centrifuge it. So here, because we have 60S subunit and 40S subunit in our cells and the drug that we have made or these drugs, uh, chlorophenicol or the doxycycline or macrolides, they mostly attack the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome. Because of that, these drugs do not affect us too much. So here, if you see, this is the doxycycline. It is bound to the 30S subunit of the ribosome. Now, the function of the ribosome is to take messenger RNA, which is a genetic material to make proteins, and that messenger RNA passes through the ribosome. And as it is passing through the ribosome, ribosome would, would read the codons or the code on, the, on that genetic material and then convert that into peptides or proteins. These proteins will then become functional parts of the bacteria or functional parts of our body, for example, enzymes or structural proteins. So here, when the doxycycline combines with the 30S subunit, it does not let the 30S subunit do its function. And the result is that the messenger RNA's translation into the proteins is stopped. And when that is stopped, bacteria cannot make more proteins. So this is what is called bacteriostatic function, that bacteria cannot make more bacteria it is the current bacteria in which the doxycycline has gone, that bacteria survives. It is not killed. 
So the drug is not bactericidal. It is bacteris bacteriostatic. That is, it would not let more bacteria be formed. But the current bacteria population that is already present, that would continue to work. So this is the discussion. The uh, interesting thing is that just like with hydroxychloroquine, the drug that was combined with that was azithromycin. With ivermectin, there is a very common combination with the doxycycline. So this is the discussion. Any questions? So let's take about five minutes for questions or discussions here, and then we'll continue. Cool. So um, James Kelly says that does bacteria bury in biofilm and thick mucous membrane, making them? It is possible that there are some bacteria that make biofilms and then having the the um, antibiotics reach them can become difficult. And this is why bacteria that have buried themselves in the abscesses or that have formed abscesses, sometimes we need surgical removal of the abscess because the body's uh, blood circulation cannot go there and kill the pathogen. So uh, there is a question that, is it contraindicated in pregnancy? Uh, Tetracyclines are definitely contraindicated in pregnancy. Doxycyclines are less uh, harmful compared to tetracyclines, but they are still uh, marked as class D drugs by FDA. That means there has been evidence that there can be harm in pregnancy. So I would say don't use it. There's a comment that doxycycline is fecally excreted, correct? Because it is not water soluble. So Kyrie will be jealous of Luffy, uh, Luffy's fame. I think so. <laughs> Luffy is becoming very popular. Somebody was asking me to make, uh, uh, what is that? Merchandise for Luffy and uh, have some hats and t-shirts. So we'll do that. Welcome from Venezuela. Welcome from Australia. So cool. So that is the discussion we have today. Interestingly, I am not seeing any YouTube uh, presence. Looks like the uh, the streaming system that I'm using, it somehow did not connect to YouTube. Anyways, I'll upload it over there afterwards. Thank you very much, guys, today. Tell me what would you like to discuss tomorrow, and we'll continue from there. Bye-bye for now.